I'm extremely saddened by the passing away of Dr. Mushirul Hassan, an eminent historian of India and a man of letters uh, and whom I had the good fortune of not only knowing for years but interacting f with him and learning so much from him. Dr. Mushirul Hassan is one of those uh, intellectuals uh, who uh, never uh, shied away from uh, encouraging uh, young people like me, uh, who uh, was an inspiration for so many and of course he contributed so much to uh, the documentation of Indian history, modern Indian history and uh, I would say he was one of the most prolific uh, writers I knew. Uh, I met him more than a decade ago in Delhi uh, through common friends and since then uh, I uh, met him regularly every, every time I was there. Uh, he even attended my book launch, in fact he was the chief guest and you know I was most uh, uh, delighted and uh, encouraged to have such an eminent historian uh, you know coming to inaugurate a, a very ordinary book uh, uh, that I wrote on Delhi. Uh, I learned many things from him and I'm sure his students, his followers have also learned so much. Uh, the most important uh, thing that I learned from him was that uh, the partition of India and the independence in 1947 had to be understood beyond the known narratives. Uh, Dr. Mushir Hassan studied the role of literature, poetry, uh, and what they said about uh, that particular event and how uh, the writers and poets were reacting to that, uh, that uh, you know, holocaust of sorts. And, uh, you know, some of, uh, many of his books have uh, overt references to that. He has analyzed so much of the literature of that era. And then I also uh, learned from him uh, the role of Muslim intellectuals in colonial India, in Delhi, uh, I love, you know, his book on the Kasbas of Awadh was an eye-opener for me. I did not know how the Kasbas were these, uh, uh, you know, small towns of uh, UP in colonial India were creating uh, a whole set of poets, newspapers, ideas, discourses. And then, of course, his last book, uh, well, his, his last book on Indian Muslims also locates uh, the trajectory and in a, in a climate where Indian Muslims are being maligned and history is being revised and rewritten, uh, Mushir Saab's work, uh, you know, stands tall and uh, will be guiding generations to come. In fact, I have his book uh, that he presented me uh, when I met him the last time and sadly, uh, you know, uh, it only arrived uh, a year ago because all my, all my books were left in Pakistan. And, uh, you know, I, I was just thinking of uh, him telling me about Gandhi and Gandhi's interaction and relationship with Muslims and how as a Pakistani I understood that Gandhi was always anti-Muslim but it was, it was actually uh, a lot of uh, Mushri Saab's work and uh, his recourse to archives that made me understand uh, things much better. Now that he's no longer there, uh, it is a sad moment for me and, and it's even sadder because uh, you know, if I had wanted to go and see him or even attend his funeral, I just cannot, I don't have a visa and getting a visa for India is next to impossible uh, these days and particularly when I'm not even in Pakistan. And well, that's life, but uh, rest in peace, Mushir Saab. You inspired so many of us and wherever you are, keep smiling and keep thinking and keep contributing.